Hi, I'm William Vokey. Please make a donation to Carnegie's annual fund. Your donations directly support programs like the video you're about to watch. These are difficult times. Help keep alive these voices for ethics. Visit carnegiecouncil.org, click the heading, Mark Support. Thanks. Ibrahim Isa is the uh, editor of El Dostur uh, newspaper, which is one of the ones in Cairo that has been very outspoken in its criticism of the government. And he said, you know, the government, it, it's like the Muslim Brotherhood and the government feed off each other in Egypt because um, it's illegal, but it's still allowed to, to work in public. And so he says the government can, you know, hold up the Muslim Brotherhood and say, you know, as the boogeyman, like, this is what you're going to get. Um, <laughs> They're going to destroy the country if you allow them to come in, and then he always says, as if they haven't destroyed the country already. Um, and you know, then the and the and the Muslim Brotherhood says, well, if only we were legal, you know, we could we could forge ahead. And I think it's a it's a great example. I mean, in Egypt, it has an old political culture. It certainly had a parliamentary um, democracy before the before Nasser took power in a coup. And, but all those parties that were there in 1952 are still there and kind of stuck. And their leadership is in, in their 80s. And they kind of reflect you know, the government, that it, there's not a lot of change over in the, in the senior levels of the government. And you know, there was a young politician, and we can debate his merits as a politician or not, named Ayman Noor. And he organized a party that wasn't religious and that was outside the Muslim Brotherhood. And it got a lot of you know, young Egyptian professionals excited about being involved in politics, and he, as was his right, ran for president, and he got you know seven percent of the vote, and he was you know immediately thrown into jail on on charges of corruption. And I think that um, whenever anybody tries to challenge the status quo, they end up being repressed. And you know the the, the Muslim parties get around that because they're older, um, they ha they can organize in the mosque, so they find a way around the, the restrictions. So. Um, you know, I understand the concern about facing um, uh, Islamic extremists at the, at the ballot box, but I think the first step is all these governments, instead of trying to say that any challenge is a, is a challenge to their power, that they have to open up. Um, you know, I mean, the Egyptian newspapers have become much, much better since they, you know, a few opposition um, papers have started. And I just think they need to open up that civic space and allow the, that kind of dialogue to develop. And I mean, people who are angry at the government, the only alternative they have now are those Islamic parties. And if you allowed other space, you know, if you open up the space so other parties could flourish and let the ideas compete, then they would diminish.